Good morning everybody, this is Stephen Pugh of the Home Bible College. It's September the 25th today and we're looking at Colossians chapter 3. Paul is bringing his teaching in the letter to the Colossians to a conclusion and he's now going to apply the teaching into the lives of the Christians at Colossae. My password is found in verse 1. A strange phrase but I'll explain it to you and you'll see how it how wonderful this exhortation is he says if you then be risen with Christ then seek those things which are above seek those things which are above where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God that little phrase those things which are above let me read the rest of the passage and you'll see what I mean he explains what he means by that he says <clears throat> in verse 2 set your affection on things above and not on things on the earth what he's saying is this if you are a Christian if you have been raised by him and seated with Christ in glory already then set your affection, set your heart, set your attention on the things above and not on the things on the earth. For you are dead. You see, as far as this world is concerned, you're dead. You're already seated with Christ in glory. You are dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. And when Christ who is our life shall appear, then shall you also appear with him in glory. Mortify therefore, put to death, he says, your members which are upon the earth, and he's going to list them all. Fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concoptions, covetousness, which is idolatry. Now we need, may need to go back through these things and revisit them. Fornication, that means prostitution. Uncleanness, that means living a life that is not clean in God's sight. Inordinate affection, that means having our affection on things that are way out of order. Evil concoptions, that's a lust in the heart. Covetousness, that's lusting after something that's not really yours to have. He says, for which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. It is these things that brings about the wrath of God upon the children of the world who are wicked. Is he talking to Christians here? Oh yes, he's talking to Christians. The fact that their sins are forgiven, the fact that they're saved, doesn't mean that they are automatically free from all of the sins of this world. We are to put to death the deeds of the flesh. We are to put to death our members which are upon the earth. Let's read on. <clears throat> he says, in which you also walked sometime when you lived in them. He says, this was part of your old life. Okay, this was part of your old life. But now, he says, put off these things. Put off anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Lie not one to another, seeing that you have put off the old man and his deeds, and have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. Let's move on through the passage. Verse 12. Put on, therefore, as elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercies. This is mercy that comes from our deep-seated love for men. Kindness. Don't need to explain that. Humbleness of mind. Don't need to explain that. We shouldn't think of ourselves more highly than we ought to think meekness now that means you might be in a position of strength over people but you will moderate 
your strength in kindness long suffering that means that you will suffer the difficulties and the problems and the inefficiencies of other people and you'll do it for a long time forbearing one another that means bearing with people when they have when they do things that don't go according to how you feel they ought to go but you bear with them and then he says forgiving one another Wow. if any man has a quarrel against any even as Christ forgave you so do you now this is a huge standard this is the spirit of the Christian that we're to put on we're to be people that forgive why? because we have been forgiven of so much more and above all these things put on charity which is the bond of perfectness and then there's two more less he says let the peace of God rule in your hearts to which you are called in one body and be thankful there must be a sense of the peace of God that rules in our hearts and also he says let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in wisdom and teaching admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs singing with grace in your heart to the Lord and then verse 17 he says whatever you do in word or deed do all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ giving thanks to God and the Father by him now that's a lot this is something I expect you to look into today that you will read this passage again and again and again and allow it to really become deep rooted in your heart and in your mind so that it flows out of you so that you begin to understand its concepts but it all starts with my password in verse 1 and it's this if you then be risen with Christ seek those things which are above may God bless you have a wonderful day. Look forward to talking to you tomorrow. Bye for now.